G'day, another tax case. This is um, the case of McDonald versus the Federal Commission of Taxation, 2001 case in the Federal Court. This is a fairly straightforward case. Um, it's a matter of whether a purchase of land came was pre-CGT or post-CGT. Um, in September 1985, um, the applicant's wife started negotiation um, for the purchase of a property um, for $200,000. On the 13th of September in 1985, um, the applicant orally made an offer for $200,000 to purchase the property, and this offer was accepted by Mrs. Ransom, the, the vendor. On the 13th of September, um, as well, the vendor solicitor wrote to the applicant solicitor um, concerning um, the, the property and said, with these words, uh, we enclose herewith contract for sale for your client's perusal and approval, and if approved for execution with a view to earn early exchange, Kindly note that no legal liability shall attach to either party until such time as an exchange has been effected. Um, on the 20th of September, 1985, CGT came in. Um, now, they didn't even sign the contract until um, much later in October that year. Um, and so um, the the taxpayer here is claiming that it was a pre-CGT asset. Commissioner is saying, well, it's a post-CGT asset. And at the time of the um, contract or the, the correct date for the purchase of the property was on the exchange of the contract. So the court basically said that they didn't believe the taxpayer um, and didn't have sufficient evidence to um, convince them that the oral agreement made on the 13th of September was sufficient and was binding. Um, as a side point, the, it was quite interesting to see that the court actually looked at what was commonplace um, in New South Wales at the time, uh, and they said uh, that it was uh, unusual for, well, it was commonplace in, in, in New South Wales for contracts to only be binding uh, once they're executed. Um, and so it was interesting to see the court look at the common practice of real estate agents or agents in exchange and per purchase of property look at what was common for other parties in the state of New South Wales. And they also said that there's probably unlikely that parties intended to be bound by their oral agreement because a sale and contract agreement normally has a plethora of other clauses and provisions in there that um, the parties would normally want to be affected and they just didn't believe that the, oral, that the parties intended to be bound or, or were bound um, by that statement, especially with the solicitor coming in afterwards and saying the parties, you know, this won't be binding until it's uh, properly executed. So that's McDonald versus the Federal Commissioner of Taxation.